long have you done? Oh my god! Security! Security! Hello, Morgan. Hello, Morgan. Tough day, right? Tough day, Tough day, right? Tough day, right? If I'm talking to myself, it must be. We've been testing a new kind of neuromod based on the Typhon organisms. You've seen what those creatures can do. Once testing starts, there's no going back. Take your time, relax, think it over. No, I'm kidding. You only have nine seconds. Warning. This is a station-wide emergency. If just one of those creatures gets back to Earth, we're lost. The tests, they changed you. I'm sorry. I wish there was another way. Nothing can survive. Whenever you're ready, Morgan. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's, it's so nice to be here in the, uh, in the futuristic vision of Prey. Do you oh. like my apartment? I, you really, uh, you, you got hooked up big time in this apartment, man. This is uh, Zach Miner, uh, Ryan Clements, and Sid Schumann of PlayStation Blog taking a look at Prey coming out of Arcane. Now, right, and I haven't played this yet, but uh, right off the bat, why are we all waking up in the same bed? Why are the three of us in one bed together? Well, you we know, had a wild there's night. a few. We don't want to get into spoilers just yet, Sid. Uh, we want to try and avoid spoilers okay, here. Um, so this is footage uh, uh, Ryan and I got a chance to play through um, the first hour of the game, actually. And so this is all footage from that first hour. There's a couple things that we're going to avoid kind of talking about because there are some really incredible reveals in that in that first hour. And I, I'm confident in saying, and you and I talked about this, that the whole opening section of Prey, including some stuff that we're not going to show here today, might be one of my favorite openings in a video game I've seen in a long time. So phenomenal stuff and, and hats off to the Arcane team for, for putting it together. Agreed. So it's our first day. Time to put on our Transtar uniform. Get ready to go up on the spaceship. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. what, what is Prey? Prey is uh, out of Arcane, who did Dishonor. They did uh, Arx Fatalis. Um, as you're probably noticing right off the bat, we're including this stuff because it kind of reveals that this is a first-person simulator. This is kind of an immersive sim. Let's just hop right on to the spaceship. Well, let's see. Oh, things. Oh, my gosh. Things are not great up on the spaceship. I like how we went from the most serene footage to the most not serene footage possible. Look, it's a simulator, but it's not apartment simulator 2064. <laughs> um, this is a game where things have gone wrong, yes. and we need to figure out what's going on. Gone very, 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 very wrong. So let me just, I, I have not seen this. This is, I, I'm sort of the resident dummy on this one. I am the biggest fan in the world of sort of the shock games. So uh, I've, I, I, I actually would consider System Shock 2 to be my favorite game of all time. Bioshock high on the list. So um, without having seen a ton of this game, it's giving me that vibe big time. And absolutely. As it, as it should. I mean, it absolutely has that emergent, player-driven choice style of gameplay that you know you're going to actually kind of see here represented in this weapon that um the, you know we're seeing right now which is the glue cannon where it al you essentially allows you to build platforms f immobilize enemies do a lot of different stuff and hey you don't even have to pick it up if you don't want to i mean there's essentially so many different ways to work your way through this very, very much damaged and very, uh, I, I don't want to use the word derelict, but it is a damaged, something's gone south uh, uh, station that your character, Morgan Yu, uh, finds 
him or herself on. What, what are these friendly little right. guys here? They're not uh, friendly. Not so friendly, <laughs> Oh, okay, I see. Um, I will say that you are uh, terribly unperceptive. Um, <laughs> the fact that these things are tr trying to kill us. Um, they, these are mimics. Uh, they seem to be kind of the, the little runts uh, of, of this game. But make no mistake, these things can kill you right quick if you're, if you're not paying attention. So this glue gun is really cool because it can kind of freeze them and then allow you to kind of finish them off with the wrench. Um, this is a game that's obviously first person, and you are shooting things, and a little bit later we're going to get some actual guns. Um, Bam! But it's not a game where you're going to be running around, firing bazookas, and, yeah. and just shooting stuff. Here we're going to take a look at some of the other kind of abilities, some of the emergent opportunities possible with uh. this like, amazing glue cannon. Um, but uh, yeah, so those, those little mimics, uh, as might be indicated by their name, can disguise themselves as other items in the world. Uh, here's another uh, little item here that might remind you of uh, a certain other game uh, mm. that you like a lot. Mm. Um, so there are skill trees in this game, and there are actually a couple different skill trees, uh, some of which we didn't even experiment with. Right. Um, so you find these neuro mods lying around that you shove into your eyeball. Uh, yeah, seems r seems right. Seems right. Yeah. My, hey, what's this? What's this on the on the ground here? I just shove it in there. Oh, I might as well shove it in there. <laughs> I, you know, I do that all the time. So we we have a couple different skill trees: scientists, engineer, and security. We obviously barely got a chance to experiment with these, barely. but suit your play style. You can be hacking turrets, hacking security systems. We'll take a look at that stuff. And oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, Jack. go ahead. I was going to say, and a quick note that um, when I was talking to the uh, lead designer in our interview together. Uh, he mentioned, Ricardo Bear mentioned that in this in kind of initial section of the station, when you get that first neuro mod, they actually give you a way to benefit from any of the initial selections you make when you upgrade wow. your character. So, like, if you want to do, like, a hacking neuro mod, they, they made sure that in this opening area of the game, there's a way to use that or a strength, you know, thing or um, some other, uh, you know, for repairs. Like, they wanted you to feel like whatever you pick, you're going to be rewarded in some capacity, which I thought was really smart design. And this is a hacking interface we're seeing now, I'm guessing. And th we'll see this right now. So so I invested in hacking, and so we're um, I'm, I'm able to kind of get into this room that's totally optional. And look, I get a weapon upgrade kit. Nice. There's some other stuff going on in the room. I, I will note... Um, and and I told I told Ricardo this that um, you know I Dishonored has been one of my favorite games the last several years. Oh yeah, I am someone that plays those games by reading everything in the world. Oh absolutely, <laughs> Arcane. There's so many emails. <laughs> there there are a few studios better uh, in my opinion at environmental storytelling than Arcane. One hundred percent agree. Right now. Um, and and I want to just soak all that in. I was really having to slap my wrist and just be like, nope, Zach, just move on, keep moving forward. Um, so here we're kind of in the main lobby of this spaceship, and everything's totally fine. Oh, oh no, everything is not totally fine. Maybe not. Where where is this sort of space station located? Do you know? Is it well, like in the solar system, or it I is in outer space? Okay, yes, it's in outer, it's space. In outer space. space. And if you look out the window here, you might see that there is potentially some uh, recognizable celestial objects. Oh, indeed. We're keeping things vague. Very vague. <laughs> I, you know what? I fear that there's going to be some spoilers out there. But that's why you just got to stick with the PlayStation blog for all, right. all the coverage. Um, so this is the main lobby, and this is kind of the main, I think, hub of the game. And so mm -hmm. there's kind of different levels that you can explore of the spaceship, obviously, as, as we've seen. Here's another example of just some of the completely optional environmental storytelling. Ryan, I don't even know if you went into this room. I, I, I know what you're doing here, but I unfortunately did not read all this stuff. But, yeah, it's awesome that you are. It's basically a little, a small museum showing the progress of the space station and kind of its development um, and the development of the company that facilitated it. So just really awesome stuff. And again, it's like you could just totally walk by this room and not even notice it. Um, so they really, oh my, who are these friendly looking fellas? Uh, again, uh, <laughs> I'm going to really question um, some of you guys' instincts. Um, these are not friendly. Um, these are phantoms, and these are the hardest enemies that I saw. Interesting. Um, 
I uh -oh. so this did you not go into this room? Right? Not, no. Remember, you you went much further than I did. I was too busy reading emails. So <laughs> I, I had to hack my way into this room. Um, so this, I think, kind of demonstrates how challenging some of the kind of fight uh, situations can be. Bam. So um, again, th these guys are doing some pretty serious damage. You can see the health indicator in the, in the bottom left. And I'm really having to kind of strategically think about how I'm going to kind of pause, you know, put, put health kits on. Um, and then you know use this kind of stun gun or perhaps the kind of the glue cannon to freeze them and then finish them off with, with the wrench. Uh, I, th I think I've, we haven't played much of it, but oh, yeah. ammo is going to be sparse. I think. Yeah. Um, it does look like there's a recharging health system. I noticed. It's da yeah down in the lower left. Uh, it is definitely very. I wouldn't say punishing, but you, you definitely have to be cognizant of your health and your well-being. Or maybe I'm wrong. What's that meter I see in the middle of the screen that keeps building up? Is that like, oh, so stamina? That's stamina. stamina. Yeah. Got it. I, but, I was incorrect by what health, I said. Health, you need to like heal I yourself. Got it. Okay. Um, you, you, you're not just always going to be at 100%. I retract my prior statement. There is not a recharging <laughs> health system. And so when you're, when you're opening that weapon wheel there, you're just triggering the health kit. That's I understand. Kind of okay. And um, another thing that Ricardo pointed out is, you know, because there were a lot of folks playing the demo when, when Zach and I were playing um, the game, is that, you know, sometimes you could just walk, like, you know, stealth your way through an environment, not even, you know, engage the mimic-like enemies. Like, right here, you see that they're kind of creating their own platforms and just kind of working their way around the environment. I mean, it's really interesting how the, the levels are laid out. And a little detection meter there above the mimic that, that was kind of flying off here. So mm. um, we're, we're getting close to the end here. But, um, you know, Ryan and I, we just scratched the surface. I wanted to just show a little bit more of kind of what is in this game. Um, so th so this is your office. Uh, this, this is I mean, Morgan's this, this, office. This inventory could be ripped straight out of System Shock 2. Right. And look, like straight you can, out of it. You can upgrade it, obviously, oh. right? You can expand it. So um, <laughs> I, think, I think the office is going to kind of be your home base. And so there's recycling of materials where you're oh, breaking material, you're my. breaking objects in the world down into different components. So there's like, there's reasons to pick up all this stuff in the world. Like what, what am I gonna do with this coffee cup? Uh, I'm gonna throw it across the room, but I could have recycled it. Really? Um, and then on the other side, um, you'll see that there is a fabricator. So there's a crafting system in this game. So you're gonna be finding, I think, blueprints and, and upgrades uh, throughout the game and um, obviously, you're not going to find most of them, um, and it's really going to kind of require exploration. And a, a quick quick point as we're watching this amazing footage and kind of closing up shop is that you do not need to have experience with the original with Prey's predecessor. You this can is go, unrelated. You can go yeah. right into this. This is its you know kind of own unique story. It's a new science fiction story you know, by Arcane, so you can enjoy it uh, do, kind of fresh. Gents, do we have any sense of the threat, these, these, these creatures we seem to be fighting? Do we know anything about what they are, or, you know, sort of where is, they factor in? It's an enormous threat, Sid. Yeah? Yes, I mean, I have no I, All I know is that the space station is not in good shape, and the people on the space station are not in good alive. It is a threat not to be taken lightly. <laughs> okay, um, I understand. And uh, just real quick before we go here, in addition to that skill tree that we saw earlier, um, we are aware that you get some access to alien powers mm -hmm. later in the game. We didn't get a chance to really look at those or, or experiment with those. Um, that was a little bit after. One last clip I wanted to show just for you, Sid. Oh. Um, so there's a locked door. We need to find our way into the locked door. Hmm, I bet you know if we read some things around the room, <laughs> maybe there's something. Wonder, Just like in real life. I wonder what the access code to that door might be. This is kind of the first big one there. Oh, do those numbers look familiar? Oh. 0451. Now that is the first that's the first code given out in System Shock 2. First code given out in System Shock 2. I believe it was in the first System Shock. Oh, it was, was it? 451. It was in all the Deus Ex games. It was in the Dishonored oh. games. It actually made its way into Mafia 3. I didn't know that. And so that, in some ways, is, you know, I, I kind of see that as, like, you see that, you know what this game is, right? <laughs> this is an indicator of, like, the systems that are present in this game, the genre of this game. It's like the Wilhelm or whatever, that, that's screw. Wilhelm's <laughs> Right. The scream from the Star, the Star Wars it's movies. It's a little yeah. identifying factor. So, yeah. um, any final thoughts, Ryan? No, that's it. I'm pumped, and uh, it's coming out on May 5th. May, May 5th. May 5th on PS4. It looks great. Arcane, a great studio. Uh, I'm totally sold on This is Morgan. The year is 2034. I keep having this dream. I'm just 
staring into the black between the stars. There's something there. I know there is. I can't see it, but it sees me. It sees everything. You know what I'm talking about. Or you will soon. This is Morgan. The year is 2035. Please listen. This isn't a dream. It's a nightmare. There's no room for uncertainty. There's no room for doubt. And know this. There's more at stake than just Talos 1. If what happened here, if even one breaks containment, we're all lost. To make this right, someone has to die. Hi, this is Rafael Colantonio. I'm the president of Arkane Studios and creative director on Prey. Hey everybody, this is Ricardo Baer. I am the lead designer on Prey. At Arkane, we love games that blend simulation and narration, like Dishonored. We do games you can play the way you want. Prey is another one of those games. Welcome to Talos 1. Because of the open-ended structure of the game, the player can go pretty much anywhere they want on the station, but right now our mission is to find a scientist named Dr. Calvino. Some of our aliens turn into things as a mean of camouflage. Lots of ways to solve problems on Talos 1. Weapons are one of them, but weapons are rare. Okay, so this is one of the most important item in the game, it's called the Neuromod, and uh, this is how the player uh, upgrade himself. So here is the RPG layer of the game, you could see there's map, status, inventory, and these are the list of, uh, this is the list of abilities that we have. So some of them are human, some of them are aliens. Which you learn by stabbing a needle into your eye. This is the glue cannon, a tool that has a lot of different uses. This is an alien power called Super Thermal. We recently acquired it using the Neuro Mod. Okay, so we're going to use the roster system in order to try and track Calvino down, but the door is locked. So we're going to take this opportunity to demonstrate one of our unique alien abilities called Mimic. So in the game you can actually learn your powers from the aliens, so it's only fair that you too can turn into a cup. The roster system helps players locate anyone aboard Talos 1. The glue cannon can also be used for traversal.
That was a phantom, one of the other kinds of aliens aboard the station. And this is a third way to use the glue cannon. So this item is called a recycler charge. In the game you can recycle pretty much anything, either to here declutter an area, or to use as a weapon. Now the recycle elements that come out of it are actually ingredients for a fabrication system that we'll show in a moment. Aliens aren't the only threat aboard Talos 1. Mimic can be used also for stealth. Inventive players will be able to chain powers together. So right now this player needs to get up onto that elevated platform. So they're going to combine Mimic with Kinetic Blast. Okay, so this is the fabrication system. So here are the ingredients I was talking about earlier, and uh, this is the fabricator. So as long as you have fabrication plans, you can create any object that is in the game. Here we're creating an object to fly in zero-g. Talos 1 is a massive space station, so here we've modeled the entire exterior which the player can use to chart their course between missions or just for exploration. located our missing crew member, let's head back in. Okay, now we're going to see uh, another ability that you can upgrade called Leverage Level 3, which allows you to pick up huge objects and use them as a weapon or just to clear a path. But players will have to be careful sometimes installing alien neuromods because on occasion it will attract the attention of other aliens. Golden Nightmare, for a reason. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Prey comes.
wanted. Morgan. The year is 2034. I keep having this dream. I'm just staring into the black between the stars. There's something there. I know there is. I can't see it, but it sees me. It sees everything. You know what I'm talking about. Or you will soon. This is Morgan. The year is 2035. Please listen. This isn't a dream. It's a nightmare. There's no room for uncertainty. There's no room for doubt. And know this. There's more at stake than just Talos 1. If what happened here, if even one breaks containment, we're all lost. To make this right, someone has to die. this dream. 